Jack, I just want to talk about the trader psychology a little bit because I think that's such a big part of trading and investing. You, you've talked about with these past couple names. You've knocked them out of the park and the entire time people were telling you, dump it, the stock's a loser, you're, you're crazy, et cetera. I mean, how did you sort of establish that moat where it's like, you know, I'm convicted in my way, I'm not going to get driven out of things by others, et cetera. So mostly the best experience, uh, the best teacher in most cases is experience. And so over my 14 years, I have found things that are extremely moat driven and are indicative of a societal move and a, a pivot that people are favoring over time. And those people may not be the general public that you speak to and may not be the person you talk to at work. But if you look at something and discover that it's undervalued and you read about it for a few months and you realize it's a little more undervalued and you learn more about the business. And over that time, unless you find something to really convince you that it's a bad idea, you should probably add to that position because eventually that person that you're asking at your job or down the street or at that firm or at that newspaper is going to turn around and say, you know what? It might not be a terrible idea. And the minute that that happens is when the, the momentum is already behind you. And you should have already created your position. And so as a trader, when people tell you something's crazy and it may not be a great idea, but you've done your due. Now, the key thing is you have to do your due diligence. It can't be a business that you don't understand. And it can't be something that you can't comprehend in terms of macroeconomics, right? So you have to know the landscape that you're investing into. But more importantly, the conviction factor will turn. And so people call me to this day about UABS and they tell me, you know, these stories about an absurdity of appreciation for many reasons. And I just tell them, well, I, you know, I called the company, just like your previous guest said, I called the company. I talked to investor relations. I called the CEO. I called the firm that did their IR. I looked up every patent that they owned and I made sure that I knew what I was getting myself into. After that, you set an alert every couple of weeks, you buy a little block of shares. And the next week, when somebody tells you it's crazy, you go buy another block of shares. So every time somebody tells me to sell something or that I shouldn't own it, I turn around and I buy more.